Boy, I had my doubts, but after seeing Tom Holland do a front flip over a ledge, I'm totally convinced he could play the new Spider-Man. If only everyone had such amazing agility. <sighs> Whatever, I'll give him a pass if he throws on some thick-rimmed dork glasses and gets a haircut. I hope he appreciates what he's got. A lot of people would kill to feel like they were Spider-Man. Which is what all the video games are for. Hell, I've played almost every single one and there's just something that's so hard to capture about being Spider-Man. I mean, we already have a game about being the Batman. Why isn't there one about being Spider-Man? There just hasn't been a definitive Spider-Man game where everyone raves about how perfect it is and waits excitedly until the sequel releases a few years later. People want to complain about the movies rebooting every five minutes, try being a fan of these damn video games. Maybe we did get the definitive game and they just rebooted right away so we couldn't focus on it. Maybe there's one that's been overlooked and really nailed it. Let's look back through the history of dead uncle simulators and see if any of them got it right. This is my retrospective of the Spider-Man games. Instead of talking shit about movies that haven't come out yet, I'll be doing something a little less formal. You hear that, Hannigan? I'm not gonna use your fancy words and economic knowledge. Put your no fun allowed sign away. I'm taking over this space party. So about the video games, what were they all like? Well, the first one on this list holds a special place in my heart. The PlayStation 1 Spider-Man game titled the, the, the Spider-Man. This one was my childhood. If I wasn't watching my dad play it over and over because I told him to, I was struggling to learn how to play it myself. It was pretty much my introduction to the character because I was exposed to it at like age two. It was the first third person action game featuring Spider-Man. There were others before it that were side scrollers or beat em ups and garbage, but this one broke the mold. It stars Spider-Man talking like a Spanish police officer and stopping a plan to infest all of New York with symbiotes. What is this, the bad guy Olympics? Look, Times Square is on the way to Omnitech. Let's find out what Venom's up to, and then we'll tackle Rhino. Alongside the titular character, a kick-ass cast of villains and heroes with plastic faces, Venom was pretty much the only character with a moving jaw. And he was voiced by Cosmo. I found that out like a month ago and it blew my mind. Where'd spider Wars go? spider Wars. Come out and play! In terms of gameplay, it's pretty clunky by today's standards, but back then, this was the shit. The simplicity has a charm. You jump, you swing, you kick, you punch. You listen to yourself make jokes. Leave him alone, Chuckles. It seems to pretty much hit the mark, right? But it's got its weaknesses. The story is pretty corny, even by comic book standards, and the limitations of the technology hold it back a lot. Spider-Man's costume is wrong because it was too hard to animate, or he just didn't feel like using a sharpie to put the webs on that day. You can only do two consecutive swings before Spider-Man remembers that Uncle Ben's death was all his fault and the game forces you to watch as he allows himself to be consumed by the cold embrace of death. But this game was hardcore. All of the graphical setbacks and simplistic design choices may have been standard fare then, but it doesn't age well. It had a sequel a year later that was pretty much the same thing with slightly better graphics and a less interesting lineup of boss fights. It was called Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro, in which Spider-Man sticks a fork in an electrical socket because Mary Jane miscarried their daughter, and then he watched his clone die horribly. Oh. Uh, oh wait, did, did that get retconned? Oh, okay, it, don't worry everyone, it got... Don't worry everyone, it's fine, it got retconned. Doesn't matter. At least this one had the costume right. And much like the last one, it has pretty high replay value because you get a new costume every time you beat it and you always want to see what the new one does. Until you get that one that makes you invincible, in which case, never mind, stop playing. They tease that one of my favorite obscure villains is in this game, the Beetle, who's like an evil Iron Man. I was so ready to have an epic battle sequence with him on top of a train and then, oh, never mind, he just flies away, fine. 
I'll have an epic battle with Electro, you coward! Oh yeah, the final mission was heavily edited because it was supposed to take place on top of the World Trade Center and this came out in 2001. So as you can imagine, they couldn't get the rights to it because a giant electrical power station on top of the building was incredibly inaccurate and the owners of the building didn't want to be so grossly misrepresented as supporting the growing non-renewable energy crisis in America. Spider-Man the movie game, I guess. A bigger step in the right direction was the movie licensed game Spider-Man. Just... Spider-Man. Well shit, I bet that caused some confusion for a store clerk somewhere. This game features the voices of the Spider-Man movie from the same year and the same general plot, but with more dumb stuff like giant robots and a whole bunch of unrelated villains just showing up because. In this one, you can swing on a web more than twice. The fact that that is an achievement worth of note is kind of sad, but other than that, it's exactly the same as those other two games. Pretty boring overall experience. It didn't do anything really new or exciting from the other two, just improved on them in small ways. Which deserves a bit of praise on its own. In the end, this one doesn't really feel like you are Spider-Man just that you're playing the movie this was inspired by. Then things get interesting in Spider-Man 2. Enter Electra. oh wait. This is the big one. Not only is it listed as one of the best Spider-Man games, it is listed as one of the best movie tie-in and best superhero games. Not only does it follow the plot of the movie, but it also expands upon it and features side stories that really get Spider-Man right as a character. Did she say Jameson? Shoot me now. Stalking girls now? <laughs> well, that's pretty pathetic, don't you think? Or is she on your naughty list, too? Mm, not exactly. What do you care, anyway? No reason. I'm just dropping by to say hi. He gets to go on team ups with Black Cat and see a world where he doesn't have all the problems he does as Peter Parker. He's tempted with being irresponsible and giving up on Mary Jane as his true love. But in the end, he realizes that his responsibility makes him who he is, and New York needs Spider-Man to be on the up and up. No matter how much I might wish things were different, there's only one Spider-Man. Gameplay is nothing short of magnificent, with combat that you can almost point to as the inspiration for Arkham's counter dodge button. Why does Batman have spider sense? And the best part of it all, Bruce Campbell is there to call you names for being bad at the game. You don't actually jump until you've let go of the jump button. Okay? Now go jump in a lake. If you tap the jump button, you'll just do a little hop. A little, a little hop. That's because you didn't charge your jump. Am I going too fast for you? He was there in the other one, but that was like a missable extra mode. This one is part of the plot. It's the first thing that happens. Oh, and swinging physics in open world. Whatever, Bruce Campbell was there! Okay, in all seriousness, this one broke new ground with the swinging physics and exploration. I mean, it was like GTA with Spider-Man. The combat was refined, the bosses were great, and the story was surprisingly well thought out. The problems lie in the fact that it gets a little tedious after a while. And it still hadn't perfected all of its new ideas. It should be praised for having new ideas alone, but they just needed more iterations and tweaks. The swinging is fun and never gets old, but after a while it really gets old. I still have a hard time getting anywhere quick with it. I've been practicing for 11 years. I just can't get high up enough and I always end up running along the ground or jumping with how often you can't make it past two stories. Maybe I just suck at it, who knows. Before you get to do anything really fun with the story, you have to go solve random street crimes. You walk to the random person with a green question mark over their head, they bitch and moan about how their life isn't perfect and they thought things would be better after college but they weren't. Then you go do some kind of annoying little task. Rinse, repeat. For what feels like ever. Oh god, I'm so tired of getting that little kid's fucking balloon back, why are they making me do this? <laughs> 
God damn, kid. You know how many people have died because I was using my godlike abilities to get you a $2 piece of rubber? You should be ashamed of yourself. I bet there's a rape victim out there lying broken and violated in an alley wondering where Spider-Man is, and I'm here getting you a balloon. You know what? F*** you. It's my balloon now. So it gets a little irritating and repetitive, and the final boss is like a Dark Souls enemy. I died so many times. There was a lot of great new ideas here, and this is definitely the base that I think all Spider-Man games should build upon. But they didn't focus on the fun factor. If only they had like an extra gimmick in the next one. An extra character to play as, maybe a more menacing villain, and, and maybe more fun stuff to do in the city rather than just waste all of your daily bugle money at the arcade. Thusly, the next incarnation of Spider-Man video games was born. Ultimate Spider-Man. No relation to the awful cartoon, this game has a story so good that they eventually took it into the canon of the book, Ultimate Spider-Man, several years later. HA! Take that, Arkham! We won this round! We're considered canon! What is it? I... I have no idea. What are those black things? Yeah, that's the I have no idea part. Mostly, you know, everything up until like the last 10%. Where's your validation by source material, huh? Fine, why don't you go run off and tell Under the Red Hood again, but dumber, you washed up hack. So I can't say much on it other than go play it and experience it for yourself, or read these dumb books for nerds. Gameplay-wise, you do things pretty similarly to Spider-Man 2, but with the addition of being switched at random intervals in the story to playing as Spider-Man's arch-nemesis, Venom, played by Eminem. Yes, he is the arch-nemesis, not the drug-addicted businessman or the soul-stealing fat guy with prosthetic arms. Venom is where the real party's at. Alright, let's finish this up. Nine. Like hell! I got dibs! He can throw cars, eat people, throw people, and not eat cars. You know what? He doesn't take shit from little kids with balloons. Damn. He just killed a child by sucking the vital fluids out of his organs and left his husk lying in the street. This game's fucking awesome. He's almost hilariously overpowered in this game. He's so badass, he even knocks Wolverine around like Hank does to Janet. Something the Hulk couldn't do, what the hell? But then Spider-Man beats him at the end. Does that mean Spider-Man's stronger than the guy who's stronger than the guy Strong enough to fight the Hulk. Never mind. It uses this great cell shaded art style reminiscent of the book it's based on, so the graphics still look good by today's standards. If The Walking Dead gets away with it, so does this one. In this game, you have a little more fine tuning to the odd jobs for Spider Man to complete, and just helping people in general. The goal isn't always to punch the cool boss in the face, but mostly to just help the guy who got caught up in the superhero battle. Spidey really shows that he cares about average Joe on the street. And look, I get that boss fight with Beetle! Alright, you armor-plated scrub, it's time that... Uh, what? What? He left again? Damn it! Where'd he go? Where did he go? No, seriously! Well, 
that just figures. Hey, I know you get this all the time, but any of you see a big scary robot guy with a backpack? Doing fun Spider-Man stuff that doesn't involve murder is pretty fun too, including racing the human torch with the swinging physics. Doing the little side mission things it actually isn't as frustrating, because it tells you a set number of them you can do before you can progress in the story. They don't have as much variety, but they're considerably easier and even really fun. Plus, if you don't feel like wasting that much time between missions on them, you can just grind them out in one session of like 25 acts of kindness to appease the Spider-Man gods, and they'll never ask you about it again. Web swinging is a lot of fun. It feels a little sluggish at first, but the speed actually helps you to learn how to maneuver around better, so when it gets much faster later, you know how to do it. When the time comes, you're gonna use that spider agility to dodge a fireball. The combat appears pretty basic, just punch and kick, but you can actually get really creative with it. Like when Spider-Man's bouncing off the walls and throwing people around with the webs. You can use this badassery to follow missions where you chase strings of unique gangs, and sometimes you can even bump into a low-level supervillain on the street and kick him in the teeth. I think this is the best one of the PlayStation 2 era. It has everything it needs to be awesome, and I highly recommend you get a way to check this one out. Whenever I ask people about this one, even die-hard Spidey fans, they usually don't remember this game. I say Ultimate Spider-Man is a criminally overlooked classic. And he'll come to you, of his own free will. Oh, I don't think we have to worry about that. What the hell are you doing? And I think they even ripped off one of the boss fights with Electro to turn it into a scene from the second Amazing Spider-Man movie. It was way cooler here though. This is the real jumping off point for these games. We get a little better every time and now we're here. Nowhere to go but up. I can't wait to see where they go next. How can they beat this one? It's gonna be awesome! Oh no! Oh, well, I'm not looking forward to that. <sighs> Tune in next time, true believers. You won't want to believe it's true. <laughs> the Venom Marathon continues on the biggest TV in New York. You're just going to stand there? Thinking about it? <laughs>